Let's recap just a minute to say that mixing, again, uh, if, that's a, if that's a buzzword for you or if that's a, an approach to singing that you're familiar with, is a two-part event. Okay, mixing is a two-part event. The first part is registration. It's your vocal registers, and that means that we have at least three primary spots where we need to be singing in order to have a complete instrument. So you just heard me name those. We've got the chest voice, the head voice, and the middle voice, and typically a singer is coming to singing with a strength in one of those areas and maybe a weakness in one of those areas. And so what we need to do is we need to have a, a daily vocalization that brings balance to all areas so that we have an even voice. This is also really important for singers to understand when they're learning technique because each one of those registers have, has different feelings associated with it. And a lot of times when a singer feels the feeling move or change, they think they're doing something wrong. And so what they're doing is they're listening to their favorite singers, professional singers, they're hearing an evenness and quality and in strength, and they think, okay, that person's getting it done with one thing. So what's wrong with me? Why did I feel that shift? Why did I feel that change? And actually, what you're missing is that all professional singers, all, all technical and trained singers, are experiencing those same changes in resonant sensation, but because they've, they've vocalized and they have technique and an approach, everything sounds even to the listener. That's the mark of a really good singer, is when it sounds like one voice, but actually they're moving fluidly and seamlessly between the different vocal registers. So that's part one, and we're gonna recap at least one exercise for each register today to get warmed up, okay? And then part two of mixing is that it's a vocal cord event. And so what we're talking about there is some of the most dreaded things in singing, like breaking and cracking and flipping, or maybe getting tired and overly squeezed because you're working the voice a little bit too hard, or experiencing weakness, breathiness, and vulnerability in part of your voice. And so what we need to work on is some exercises that bring consistent vocal cord function, so that as you sing through the range of your voice, you don't lose the connection, you don't lose the efficient vibration in your voice. That's part two. So we'll do a little bit on vocal cord function today. And then we're going to be doing some more advanced scales to put everything together and sing out. Does that sound cool? All right, let's get started with a little bit of a warm-up. Let's go through one of our SOVT exercises, semi-occluded vocal tract exercises. So those can be your lip trills, your tongue, or you can use a fricative if you want, like a V, or an M, or an N, whatever works best for you, okay? But we're looking for something that's partially blocked. That's what that, that title means, so that we're getting a balance in the, in the volume, in the airflow, in the vocal cord closure, and in the resonance, okay? So here we go, let's roll through our scale. It sounds like this. And for feminine voices, I want you to start wherever you can, okay? Take it up as high as you can comfortably without pushing, and that's gonna be unique for everybody. So please sing at your own comfortable range, okay? Here we go together, breathe, one, two, Three, four. Pick the filter that works best for you. Don't worry about anybody else. Pick the one that helps you find your balance. Good, if it gets too high, just please fall out. We gotta cover all voices. Good, try not to push, we're way up high now. Feel the weight come off the voice. That's it, keep breathing. Use a smooth stream of air. Good, if you fell out, try to rejoin when you can.
stage, but each person has a unique low. So sing where it's comfortable. And last one. Good, okay. Those filter exercises are so beneficial. If I had five minutes and I could only do one warm up, I'd pick an SOVT, okay? And they do three important things. They balance your breathing so that you're not pushing harder as you sing higher. Okay, they make sure that you use a consistent airflow and they really help with uh, the economy of the breath and even with breath support without thinking. That was a really long phrase that you were singing there. So it's teaching you to sing with your air, okay? And keeping that air smooth and even as you sing up and down the scale. The second thing that it does is it gives you balanced core closure. And that's what we were just talking about in our second part of mixing. So it, it sends a healthy back pressure down to the vocal cords and gives you consistency with the vibration. So you should feel like you're not cracking and flipping as much. And if you feel a flip in there, that's okay, keep going. This exercise will actually help you begin to smooth that out and make that more of an even transition. And the last thing that it does is it balances your resonance. So we all know that like when we sing, sometimes one part of our voice sounds completely different from the other. And when you start working with SOBT exercises, you start to find that evenness in your tone, where from the bottom to the top, it starts to sound like one equal voice. So those are one, this is a wonderful setup exercise. And then if you can begin to transition that into open vowel sounds, then you're on the right track. Let's go to some goo goo goos, all right? What we're working on here is very efficient chord closure. So we wanna feel a little bit of a kick from the G, and then we wanna feel it followed up by a hooty vowel. And we're gonna start in our chest voice, and then we wanna feel all the weight come off and go through our transition up into the head voice. So as I, especially as I get higher, I don't wanna strain, I want goo 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 Go for those easy, agile transitions, okay? Let's try it, here we go, from the bottom. Good, very staccato. Like kick with the G. Followed up by a hoody narrow vowel. It should carry you right up in the head voice. And then come back down to chest voice. So you feel the movement between registers. Again, sing where you're comfortable. And don't strain your voice. singing at a very efficient level. Okay, let's go to one of our chest voice exercises from week one, okay? Remember that when we sing in chest voice, we're trying to isolate sound in the mouth. We wanna feel the resonant sensations reflecting off the roof of the mouth inside and off the sternum outside, okay? Everybody give me a chest voice call real quick. Put a hand on the chest to feel those vibrations. Say, hey, hey, hey. Good, and remember that a lot of times we associate chest voice with volume. It makes a singer wanna get loud real fast and we start to get kind of heavy and pushed. You don't need to be loud, but we want to swell and have a nice, comfortable strength in our chest voice, okay? So one more time, that, that comfortable swell at about a medium effort. Hey! Hey! Good, now to put the voice right on the lips, we're gonna use the B consonant, a voice consonant that helps you attack right on the mouth. Say, bu, bu, bu. Bu, bu, bu. Good, and let's try to find a nice strength that can swell in our chest voice, okay? So starting comfortably low, let's go bu, 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 bu. Do the 
work. Put a little air in your cheeks. Ba, 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 like a pounding kid. Ba, 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 ba. scales we're reaching the feminine voice bridge and I want the feminine voices to stop okay we want to come up to the threshold I'm gonna take the masculine voices a little bit higher to their bridge around E flat okay so let's come up just a few more two three four ba, 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 ba. chest voice you want to try to bring that that foundational quality up to the threshold of the first bridge and for feminine voices that's going to be around a b flat b and for masculine voices that's going to be e f f sharp okay remember that it becomes unique to you but you don't want to try to start pushing pure mouth resonance through the bridge that would feel like a strain okay so right up to that threshold and get the the voice comfortable with that all right let's come up to head voice next and let's do a head voice exercise so we're going to start uh, in, the, in the highest register and bring that transition down lightly, okay? Again, let's look at our vocal cords real quick. Everybody pretend like your hands are your vocal cords, okay? And we have different compressions that we can find, a whole range of compressions that we can use when we sing. And this, again, speaks to the chord function. Again, if we, if we were using our hands as a model for our vocal cords, if our hands were kind of loose, like we were weak, we'd get a loose compression and some air would get through. Say, hi. And you can feel that, okay? And then if we put our hands in a perfect position, like we're praying, say, hi. hi, and you just change that relationship. So less air gets through, there's more cord thickness involved in the phonation, and all of a sudden we come up with a balance. And then if you press your hands together, or if you can close your cords a little bit more thickly, you get hi. hi, and we feel more of the vocal cord get involved in the sound making process, okay? So we have those three different levels. When we're going for head voice, we wanna be just right. If it's a little too slack, you're gonna get Whee! And it'll feel really airy and breathy and actually find kind of a falsetto condition. If you over squeeze it, wee! Okay, that's gonna feel really uncomfortable. So we wanna make sure we're coming in just right, wee! Wee! In my high head voice. And this scale sounds like this. So I'm gonna be coming in, wee! Okay, but I don't want to be too loose and I don't want to be too squeezed. I want to be just right, okay? Everybody try that real quick. Let's go for a clean connection. Two, three, and. Beautiful, okay? Now we got to start a little bit higher for the feminine voices. So we're going to start up on the feminine high F. Okay, and then I'm going to bring the masculine voices in around high C, or you can join a little before if you like, okay? So here we come from that high F on we. One, two, three, four. Try not to be loose and breathy. Get a nice clean connection. Here's that high C masculine voices breathe. voice gradually. Good. Try to add a little chord closure.
Okay, everybody with me so far? So we've hit two registers. Let's go to the middle register now. And we've got to get some pharyngeal resonance going, okay? Remember that the middle register is probably the most unfamiliar and the one that we need to, to work the technique on the most, okay? So let's try to get in there real quick. If everybody vocalizes on the end of the word NG, say song. Song. Mm -hmm. And when you get stuck on a mm, you can immediately start to feel the resonance sensations inwardly on the pharynx and outwardly on the bridge of your nose. Mm -hmm. There we go, that's some good middle, re uh, uh, middle resonance, okay? So today what we're going to do is we're going to work with three degrees of nasality. We're going to sing a classic arpeggio on full nasality on mm, -mm and you won't be able to sing that one very loud, okay? That's a nice closed sound, so you don't want to push the voice, make that your softest, lightest effort, okay? Then we're going to go to 50% nasality on oh, 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 like we're French, say croissant, okay? Oh, oh, oh. Or you can think of twang. Okay, like we go down to Nashville and all of a sudden we want to sing some country music, so some country twang. Okay, 50% nasality. You're going to feel an O vowel in the throat, O, oh, but you're going to feel that the voice is dominated by nasal resonance on top. Oh. That's going to give the voice a really nice ring and ping. It's also going to make it feel strong without it feeling heavy or weighted down by the chest voice. Okay, and then the next thing that we're going to do is, is a, a balanced tone on O. Oh. Mm -hmm. So we want to find our finished sound. So check me out. If I'm coming into this, I want to go 100% nasality. 50%. Now you could call that 0%, but it's not 0%, okay? We never sing without nasality, otherwise we'd sound dull like we had a cold. Okay? So if you want some healthy nasal resonance in the end, but you want it to sound like a balanced tone. You got me there? Yeah. Okay? So the first one is the guide. And again, don't sing that one too hard. Just give it enough energy that it feels connected and successful and feel the high note ascend correctly. Okay? Then try to begin to open the vowel into on and feel that you're, you still have the assistance of the nasal resonance, but you have more body and a little bit more singing going on with the O vowel and then move it to the pure voice, O, oh, okay? Let's all try this. Sit up tall for me if you're sitting, stand up if you can. Get a good breath, and we're gonna do three back to back. One more time, NG, oh, oh, oh. and O. Oh. You got it, okay? Keep the airflow smooth and even. First on NG, three, four. Now O, N, and then O. Oh. teach each other and NG. Good. Sing where you comfortably can. And. So chest voice, head voice, and that middle resonance that starts to blend those things together, it adds presence to the chest voice and also a sensation of release 
right? So it doesn't feel like you're dragging up weight or heft. It also adds presence and strength to the high head voice. So if you feel like you're singing a little light and high, it starts to add a little bit more fullness in body if you're coming from the top in, okay? Awesome. So let's start to transition this. We need to do a little bit of chord function. So I want everybody to fall back on their vocal fry. Everybody say, ah, uh, ah, uh, uh. Good, and what do we wanna draw from that? Well, that's the register that exists below chest voice. And what we feel there is it takes minimal effort, minimal breath force, but it gets really efficient chord closure. So you wanna feel the gentle touch and you wanna feel the efficiency in closing the vocal cords. Then what we wanna do is see can we ascend with that same effort in the breath and that same efficiency on the vocal cord. Try it. Exactly. So I want you to imitate a creaky door, okay? Like you're opening an old door in a house. Ah. And that's what I mean by consistent vocal cord function. If I don't have consistency there, I get a break. Ah. Ah. That's the lack of consistency. So you don't want to be embarrassed about that. That's your muscles learning, okay? And they're trying to transition the voice higher. But we need this exaggeration that sounds really foreign and funny to start to get that balance in the vocal cord vibration. And once you master it at the exaggerated level, you can start to balance it, okay? So last time, let's give me that creaky cry and don't let it get too normal. Really try to go for vocal cord control. Try to slide up and down your voice and not feel those vocal cords falter or break open. Ah. Ah. Right, okay? Almost like you're walking a tightrope vocally, okay? Now let's put a little pattern to that. I want everybody to try to just give me a waltz pattern. Say, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Again, and, okay? So, if we're looking at those again, this is gonna be, we're starting on G2, okay, for the masculine voices, and we're gonna be starting on G3 for the feminine voices, okay? Let's all try together. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Speech, say, oh no. oh no, why did I come to this class? <laughs> okay, so keep it back on the voice. Uh, 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 uh. That's it. So you can just start to, to get more and more out of your voice. Now this takes time, it's not like a light switch. You can't just flip it with the idea and all of a sudden it works. It's something you have to give patient, consistent practice to, okay? But once you get it, it starts to become very free and your voice starts to sound very even as you move up and down. And if you can master the light level, you can progress that into more of a medium singing and then eventually more volume, okay? So you gotta get that efficiency going in your voice. All right, let's, let's transition this now and start moving a little faster and let's, let's uh, go to some consonants with it. So we're gonna use vowel consonant combinations and these are really helpful for transitioning it into your uh, normal voice. So we wanna go for, again, a little bit of an exaggeration, keep a little bit of that cry and say, nay, nay, nay. 
Now this is important. It's going to slightly elevate your larynx, which helps with chord closure. Okay, in, in a slightly high uh, imposition on the larynx, the chords can come together a little bit more efficiently. So you're going to feel like it's it's easier to get a nice connected tone out of out of a bratty kind of whiny sound, nay nay nay, than you would out of a low sound. Okay, when your larynx goes low the vocal cords can release a little bit more airflow, and that's why that can feel more open and more rich. But right now we're working on the good chord closure. So if I'm getting up here and I'm singing something like this, nay, 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 and my muscles are failing by singing this bratty sound, nay, 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 start to get evenness and then I again I can back away from that use much less of the exaggeration but the muscles have learned and I'm, I'm now getting a balance as I go through the range can you hear that okay so a slight imposition here again an exaggeration like a bratty kid say nay 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 right and now bring the volume up to mezzo piano or mezzo forte all right and let's try that scale again like this nay 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 Okay, high G above high C. But that's just me showing off. And you guys can get up there too. You just need to start to experiment with it. Take it as far as you can, okay? Comfortably, all right? But you see how it really starts to bridge the voice and give you that mix that we're seeking, okay? Then we want to start to see, can we lose that imposition in the larynx and bring it a little bit lower? And this is going to give us a balanced tone. So listen to what I'm talking about. <laughs> Okay, see how that last one, na, 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 na. that's starting to sound a lot more open and a lot more balanced, okay? This is me making subtle adjustments to the larynx now and taking it from the high pos position to a neutral and maybe even a low position if you wanted to go for, for that color, okay? Everybody rest your fingers here on the larynx and feel those just with your speech, okay? Swallow and you'll feel that whole mechanism tighten up and lift and then come back into its resting position. All right. When your teachers say that you shouldn't sing with a high larynx, that's what they're trying to avoid. They don't want anything that's cutting it off. But if my larynx had gotten in the way, I wouldn't have been able to sing after just a few scales. Okay. So we don't want the larynx reaching for higher pitches and becoming uh, so tight that it closes off the voice. But a slight imposition can, it can really help with building your mix. It's also the color that we use for a lot of contemporary singing. Okay. If I'm singing more of a rock vocal, I certainly want to be using a high larynx, not a low larynx, okay? So anyway, that's a discussion for another class, but we've been using that. Once we get up here, if I'm going I get three different tone colors from three different larynx positions. So feel that in your speech here real quick. Say, nay, nay, nay. I'm just going to feel this very light jump in the larynx as it comes up to that higher position. Nay, nay, nay. But you could talk like this all day long, okay? You could be Bugs Bunny or you could be SpongeBob. What's up, Doc? Okay? We're just getting a slightly high larynx. Then if you go to neutral, say, na na na. Like the word never. Na 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 na. That's it. It's resting position where it's not reaching up and it's not being pushed down. And then if I want something a little lower, think maybe a little bluesy, say, uh huh. Uh huh. Hot stuff. Hot stuff. Ooh. Good. Say, na na na. And so just by speaking, in your own in your own voice but letting that be a little bit relaxed down you get a lower larynx and again that gives me three different colors here na, 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 
na na. Okay, so let's try that. Let's go high, medium, low in our mix now from the top. We're going bratty, nay nay nay, to balanced, na na na, to a little bit bluesy, na na na. Okay, and try to feel our mix work for us. Yeah, let's try that. Breathe for it. One, two, three. piano approach. Think high lyric speech, balanced speech, bluesy speech. One, two, three. That's it. some movement okay let's start adding the breath a little bit all right let's start with our, our five vowels a a e o u and we're gonna sing okay so now I want you trying to put all of these different capabilities together your chest your head your mix your vocal cords and start singing very even and efficiently so this sounds like this we're gonna go ah you to try to flow through, okay? One, two, three, four. Try E. E. 
you starting to get the pieces of the mix together? Because this is what's so important. Really, guys, if we, you know, just to put a button on the class, like if we're really looking at it, all healthy singing is a mix. Okay, mix is not one thing. A healthy singing is a mix. It's, it's a combination of a strength feature and a flexibility feature. And no matter what style you're singing in, it's gotta be a combination. It's gotta be the efficient vocal cords. It's gotta be the registration where you're using all your different voices as you sing up and down. We have light mixes, we have full mixes, we have balanced mixes. So really, it's about having like the full working instrument. Okay? And I, I hope that over the course of this last month, those of, you, those of you that have taken the whole course, you've learned a lot about how to have like a, um, a really well-balanced daily vocalization and an approach to your instrument. Each one of you needs to look at your voice and go, oh, I, I need to lean into this. This is something I didn't know about or that my voice really needs. Each one of you is going to have a different fix. Each one of you is coming to singing with a different strength and also coming with a different weakness. And so each the, 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 uh, the adjustment is going to be unique to each one of you. Okay, so hopefully we've, we've uh, presented like an entire menu of options so that you can go to your voice and work on it. And just know that uh, when we sing different styles or at different times in our life, our voice gets out of balance. So it's a constant approach, it's constant learning for the rest of your life. And if you take good care of your voice, it'll take good care of you, okay? Interested in more voice training? Visit us at wolfstudiosnyc.com.